Welcome. Welcome to episode 41 of the Alex Steele Show. It's a real blast to have you here. It's going to be a lot of fun. So welcome. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a more ambitious project than I'll often do. Often it's kind of something a little, uh, a little simpler. Today we're going to try something a little more complex, a little more work in it. We'll see how it goes. This might be a two-parter. I'm going to try and get as much of it done today as possible though. We're going to be making a floral, and now obviously the title on YouTube says a beautiful floral um, uh, coat hook. We'll find out if it's beautiful at the end of the show. For now I just got to try and make it beautiful. I have all of this material right here. I have a piece of what looks to be uh, two inch by three eighths of an inch flat mild steel, uh, maybe 12 or 13 inches long. I have some bits of three eighths inch round and I have some half inch square mild steel. I'm gonna start off with this piece and we're gonna start off splitting it. So I'm going to put it in the fire like that. And I'm gonna turn up the pressure a little bit so we got plenty of heat. Now, Sam, where is Sam? Sam's not here. It's just me today and I sadly am missing one HDMI cable so I can't take my switching board and have it right here, which would have been handy. That's all right. It just means I've got to, I'm going to be running forwards and backwards to switch you guys over to the different cameras as we go on. But anyway, nonetheless, we'll persevere and we'll have a great show. First thing I, can, I, I, I need to do, you can just about see the vise, has some sharp corners, sharp ends on uh, this half inch square. Let me go ahead and move this camera around so you can see what's going to be going on. I'm going to be rasping it off in the vise. So, if I pull focus there, we can then go ahead and switch you over. I'm going to rasp off these little sharp corners here. Just so I don't cut myself. This will also help when we go to a taper to avoid getting any fish lipping there on the end. I'll flip that over. Got plenty of time as that one piece has a little ways to go before it gets hot. Welcome if you're joining. Today is episode 41 of the Alex Steele Show. We're going to be making a coat rack. So we're going to have two hooks. The whole thing is going to be decorated with some kind of floral elements, which is going to be exciting to try out. And so it's just wonderful to have you all here on this little experimental, uh, experimental project. We're going to see how much we can get done. It is sure to be a hoot though, so welcome. I'm now deburring the ends on the pieces of half inch square that are going to be making up the actual hooks. Using a farrier's rasp. Notice I'm not kind of digging in and then trying to push because of how aggressive these are. I find that it's a little easier to just, you know, essentially get it moving and then lower it down so you have the momentum and the weight of the rasp behind your stroke. You can, in fact, use the rough side of the rasp. Um, that also works, and there it's just super aggressive, and it's super critical that you get it moving before you touch it, otherwise it just won't go. This is a farrier's rasp. If you, any of you guys know any farriers, like they, 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 they have lost use for them much sooner than we lose use for them as blacksmiths, so you can always uh, take their discarded ones, with their permission of course, and you'll still be able to put them to great use um, in your own uh, in your own smithy, which is which is just lovely. Da -da -da -da. How about I do that? That'll be an interesting shot. Whoa, it's shaky. Can make people get seasick here. There we go. Manual focus. Jolly good. And we'll go ahead and run it back to the run it back to the wide view. So welcome everybody. It's fabulous having you all here. Thrilled to see that there are 975 people on YouTube watching. I'm going to run over there and look at some comments in a little bit. Feel free to use the Super Chat feature. If you have any burning questions that you want to have answered, that'll be the best way to get in touch. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's get started. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chisel and I'm going to make a chisel cut. I should have thought about this sooner, but I might not have a pair of tongs that can hold the stock. Let's see if these will do. I'm also going to want a tong clip if I can at all find one up. Ah, proper preparation is always helpful and despite the fact that it's always helpful it is always non-existent here 
in my workshop, so I don't know where I have a tongue clip. So we will have to work without. We'll make do nonetheless. So we're going to go to this view right here. Uh, pull this puppy out of there. And I'm going to make a cut. Um, how long of a cut am I going to make? I'm not sure. I'm not exactly set on the design of this piece. But nonetheless, oh, actually, I tell you what could be easier. I don't know where I put it. I have another chisel, which I might get if this proves to get a little toasty. Because I'm on, on top of a lot of very hot steel right here. See if that's in the middle. I need to move it over slightly. There we go. Okay, that is scorchingly hot. There we go. It's a little, I'm running it off a little bit to that, to my right hand side. Not going to be the straightest of cuts. But I want it to end at least somewhat in the middle. Uh, it's funny, all this heat, I'm making very exaggerated adjustments. Okay, I'm going to find a much better solution for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see if I can find my handled hot cut. Because that'll just be a million, ow, my glove just burnt me. That'll be a million times easier. Ta-da. Huzzah. I found it. It's a little blunt. I don't know if this was ever hardened or not. I can't remember. I'll see if I can file it to sharpness real fast. So I'm just in this vise over here. Nope. Oh, let me grip it. How is everybody doing? How is everybody doing? Are we all well? Have you all had productive and successful weeks? Let us know in the comments. In a few minutes here, I'll come over and have a read of them. We're streaming simultaneously. Let me just double check everything's good. Well, yeah, it must be. It doesn't look like there are any complaints. Make sure the stream's healthy. We're streaming simultaneously on Twitch and YouTube today, which is good, hopefully without the bugs that we had last time. Last time we had some issues with the uh, upload speeds. It looks like my network provider has slowed down the uh, speeds here at the workshop, which is awfully sad. Um, trying to get in communication with them to fix all of that. Hopefully, we'll return to some jolly good lightning fast Wi-Fi very shortly. For now, however, we have to deal with uh, going through a separate server to then split it on off to the other two servers. Okay, so see how wavy that cut line is? That's no good. I just want it to end nicely and in the middle. The rest is all going to get forged out, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So, I'm going to run this down. I want to thank my uh, Twitch viewers here earlier. We did a little pre-live show live stream. They uh, came up with this suggestion for the live show, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of working from the base of the cut, moving along as I go, taking it out every time. So hopefully I can get a relatively straight cut, which isn't something that's really happening right now. Um, but also so I can see what I'm doing and so my tool isn't going to be overheating. Okay, I'm going to take another heat right now. Back in the forge we go. That's going to take about a minute or so to heat up. So I can come in here and, uh, and sit down and see how we're all doing, read some comments, see what's new. Great, fabulous. Thank you, Mathieu Belander Camden. He says, I need to open an online shop. Um, sadly, I'm too busy to make a lot of things. I'm too busy to really make things for sale, making the YouTube videos, so it's difficult. I can't, uh, can't really do an online shop, otherwise I wouldn't be able to make YouTube videos. What I do have is I have merchandise, like great merchandise, and you can buy the awesome merchandise. There's a link in the description below. Hello, everybody. Brill, brill, brill. So many comments, just fantastic. Very pleased. D Backer Maker just did their first bit of blacksmithing ever on May the 1st and made a pennula brooch out of rebar. Congratulations. This is very, very exciting. Goodness, everybody. Thrilled with the amount of people watching. Thrilled with having all you awesome people here hanging out. Great. Steel is probably hot. Uh-oh, shuffle it over a little bit. We're going to do some more cutting. Now, I'm beginning to approach the uh, bottom of this cut, this wavy, wavy cut. And I've still got a ways to go at the root of the cut. Now, when I get there, 
when I get closer to the bottom, I don't want to open up the cut and then damage my cutter on the actual hard anvil face. So I'm going to take a block of mild steel, and over the block of mild steel, I'll finish my cut. There we go. That opened it up nicely. If I can just go, move, 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 move. There we go. Now I just need to come into the base of the cut there. Great. That opened it up. That opened it up even further. There you can see. Much more opened. Lovely. So now what I'm going to do next heat is I'm going to lock it in the vise and I'm going to take a chisel and we're going to chisel in. That's going to open it up. That's going to give me a little better access in there so I can file off the rag and then begin forging my finials after having flipped it around and done similar to the opposite side. Great. Well, fun. It's great having you all here. I'm going to make sure that this camera is going to be set up on the vise. There we go. Do, 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 do so that you can at least see somewhat clearly what I'm going to be doing when I run over to the vise. Great, pulled focus, good to go. Now I think I'm going to want a different chisel to do this. I was initially leaning towards using a handheld chisel. Um, however, I have a handled chisel that should indeed work admirably for the job. Hope we're all doing well. Welcome, if you're just joining us, we're going to be making a somewhat kind of floral themed coat rack today which is going to be fun, really excited to see how this turns out, really excited for some heavy forging today, so thank you for joining me. Hello, hello, hello. Outstanding, 1500 people watching on YouTube, that's just thrillingly exciting. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, one and three, there we go, that should give us a little bit of a, a, little bit of a view about what's going to be going on. There we go, you'll be able to see from there. Okay, get rid of that piece of steel, make sure my workspace is gonna be somewhat clear. Somewhat clear, close the vise up so it's ready. I'm gonna put a glove on. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in there, see how this goes. So, take my tongs. Boom. boom. Start opening it up like this. Okay, great. Now I'm a little deeper. I'm going to move it in the vise to there. Give it a little clamp. Woo! Hot scale. There we go. So. Oh, actually, I still have pretty good access. I'm now going to take a rasp. Any of those sharp... Oh, that, that's, not, that's not the kind of level of access I'm going to want. So I'm actually going to open this up like that. Boom. Hit it there. There's a little bit of a sharp edge created when you cut. So whatever I can easily access, might as well take a few seconds to rasp that off. See if this can help us draw it out into a slightly cleaner cut as we go. Really recommend you guys get an old rasp like this. Or a new one, you'd be amazed at how sharp new ones are. But this is a really essential tool to own. Okay. Great. Now. Oh. Lost my grip there. Firing a hot scale at myself as I do this. Make sure that bent, I missed. Make sure that bent easily. You can't see me, can you? That was smart. I'll make you guys, I'll switch you guys over. Don't worry about it. Doo -doo -doo. There's our cut. Okay, I want to see something. If I can grip this, I'm going to go ahead and do the same on the other side. I can't grip it. I don't have a very good grip there. Because of this, 
I'm gonna do some of the rest of the work that I need to do on this piece right now. Uh, later on, uh, yeah, I think so. I'll find another solution for gripping it when it's utterly essential. For now, however, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quickly measure roughly how long that cut was. Not interested in amazing, amazing accuracy there. But that was about eight centimeters or so. So if I give that a little scratch, I can now just take a little punch of some variety. And now though it can't be gripped very well, I just want to make a little mark. Oh, I tell you what would be perfect for this little cold chisel. There we go. So I'll now take a cold chisel, find the middle, give it a little pin prick, move it if I have to. Oh, went the wrong way. There we go. Great. I could line down the rest of it. You know, this is a cold chisel after all. It isn't a radius though, which means that it's a little difficult to run it on down. No, I'd better off do it hot with the uh, hot chisel. But the reason for doing this is I now want to measure the distance between here. Great, that's about bang on eight inches in distance or so. So if I think about what might be an appealing gap between the two hooks. Da -da -da -da. Might as well just make it into thirds. I, I'm definitely not using a calculator here. 2.66, 2.6 recurring. Great. So, I'm going to take, I don't have a center punch. I'm going to run and grab a, oh, I do have a center punch. It's here somewhere, I'm sure of it. I was using it. Where did I put it? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. In, ah, it's on the floor. Where every, where every, uh, <laughs> where every blacksmith leaves his tools. Not me, of course. My, my tools are never left on the floor. Never. No. They're all, they're all neatly, neatly arranged, of course. So, moving on swiftly to two and a half. That looks pretty close. Give that the lightest, lightest touch. Oh, that ruler gets hot. You know, I don't think I really like that, having it in thirds. I don't think it looks too well. I don't, too well, too good, pardon me. And, uh, my mind might change on that. We'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna do it in thirds. I think the rest of it will still make it pretty cool piece. Come on, mark. So mark this, top and bottom with my calipers. Make sure I drop at least three tools while doing it. And now I will go for a center punch mark between those scribe lines right there. And right there. Before I go and commit to it, you know, I'm gonna just go ahead and check that we're relatively close. It's a forged piece, I'm not concerned about perfect accuracy. Well, there's a big difference there. Big difference there, I can't do much measuring, can I? Ooh, hot steel. That's embarrassing. So. Well, the main difference is that's a little closer than that. So, I think I have an easy solution. Great, easiest solution in the world. They fix this. I'm happy for that to be wider. That's absolutely fine. I still think that's gonna look good. That was more what I was leaning towards fixing anyway when I was thinking about where I didn't like it. I was thinking about making those two holes wider. But instead, all I'm gonna do is just go ahead and move my cut this way just a little bit so now what I want to do is while I can hold on to it here I'm gonna punch those two holes um, I think that will help Let's see and I'm quite happy to punch them because they're not gonna end up not gonna end up oxidizing that region all too much I don't think so you know hopefully this goes all right 
Uh, or maybe before punching it, I might texture it all a little bit. But I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna texture the tops just a little bit before I do any punching. So I'll just take one heat doing that. Ow, that ruler is getting very hot. Do a little bit of texturing, so I'll grab a hammer. Make sure I don't drop the hammer. Almost dropped the hammer. And yeah, where is the punch that I'm going to be using? This is the punch that I'm going to be using, so I can set that up ready. At the end of the heat, I can start marking out my holes. Aside from that, I think I need some water. I've not drunk enough water in the last 20 minutes. Plenty of time while all that heats up. Come check in, see how everybody's doing. See what's new in the world of the internet. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 1776 viewers, that's pretty cool. It's amazing, the amount of YouTube comments. I can hardly read any. Hello, everybody. Sam is on holiday. Sam is officially on holiday as of today, in fact. I believe he's visiting his parents tonight, and then he's going somewhere to enjoy a week-long holiday with his family, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's sad he can't be here hanging out with us all, but, you know, hey, you've got to do what you've got to do, right? So, we persevere nonetheless. Hello, everybody. From Trinidad, Trinidad, blah, 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 blah. Trinidad and Tobago. We have a viewer from Trinidad and Tobago. That's fantastic. Brill, brill, brill. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, I'm so pleased that you're all here. All fantastic. We are going to put that right there. My steel is slowly getting warm. Not quite all the way hot yet. Plug it in a little further. I'm going to make sure that camera three is a little better set up. So I'm going to move this around, have somewhat of a view of me working when we do so. Boom, focus. Upwards she goes. Camera three is ready when I want it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're going to punch some holes there in a second. Woo! So it's been a long week. Down there on the ground, I'm staring at a pile of 76 hammers. Not finished, might I add. Not finished. I still have one more heat. So I still have probably another day and a half to two days of forging left in them. And then all of the rest of that is going to be finishing work, which is going to be brutally exhausting. You know, if I, if, if I think the forging is difficult, the rest of it is, is even more strenuous and exerting than the forging because every single one of these needs the faces to be ground and polished and then heat treated and then handled and then boxed and then shipped up. Still lots of work to go. It's exciting though, it's my biggest, uh, biggest batch of probably anything to date. Um, you know, almost all of the things that I do have always been kind of small batch. So it's uh, exciting, to, exciting to do a big batch like this, certainly. So, we're gonna grab the punch. Oh no, sorry, what am I talking about? We're gonna texture it first, apologies. I'll take my flat side of the hammer, run the hammer down it. Great, I hit it on the diagonals. I want to roughen it up a little bit. I want to make it look a little more natural. That's exactly what any shoddy craftsman says about his work. But I, I'm serious, I do want it to look a little rougher. So I'm taking the clean stock and I'm just beating it around a little bit. I think that's gonna look a little more appealing than just the straight mill finish. Humor aside, there is always, you know, there, there certainly is an aesthetic. I mean, you know, uh, something worth appreciating in the rougher aesthetic. Um, so, humor aside, you know, there are a lot of people that do very well uh, and, uh, and make very successful pieces because of you know, the texturizing they put on it, making it look a little bit more natural. But it's always a great, a great excuse to rely on, to say that, you know, you're trying to make it look a little more natural. 
Do do do. What's the largest sum of hammers that I've done in, in one go? Um, up to now, I believe it was probably 50 or 51 hammers in one go. So this is, uh, this is up there. This is up there competing with that little go. Yes, it's a big old pile of hammers. It's amazing, you know. It's uh, lots of work to go still. Lots of fun, and it's exciting to know that a lot of people are going to get some really nice hammers too. Great having you all here. Remember, YouTube, if you have any questions, use the Super Chat feature. It's the best way to get them asked and me to be able to reply. That's also very kind of you too. Very generous. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. What fun. It's just waiting on steel to heat up. It's exciting. A little bit later, I'll be having two pieces in the fire when we go to actually making the hooks. For now, however, we just have the one. Easier to tie it. You know, when you have two similar things in the fire, you can do that. Otherwise, it's, you're just letting stuff oxidize to hell and back if it stays in there without being worked. For example, if I have a large piece and a small piece, the small piece is going to stay in there a lot longer. Fantastic. Okay, we're almost ready, almost ready, almost ready. I'm going to move this one screen around on my confuser. Little AVE reference right there. Move that one screen around, fantastic. Boom! Are all the hammers sold out? Sadly they are. These were sold on the 1st of March. Um, in a very short amount of time, which was very exciting. And uh, yeah, they were all pre-ordered on the 1st of March. Okay. So I'll take the punch out with every blow firstly. So your bloody hand doesn't get too hot because that's a big old hunk of metal to hold your hand over. Mainly just so you're not overheating the punch and so you can direct the direction of it as you get down to the bottom. Just shake your hand around for no reason at all and you know maybe take it out of the glove and wave the glove around. I mean, it's not at all like the glove is you know burning you or anything. That wouldn't be the case at all. No, 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 no. Nah, sadly the glove being black doesn't help. It absorbs all that radiant heat. So then it just goes straight through into my hand. I usually like a slightly lighter. There we go, those red one. Can you, no, you can't see it, can you? I have some red rigger gloves that I prefer. They have gray palms. They seem to keep you a little cooler than these black palmed ones. But still, you know, there's just so much heat coming off this that uh, it gets you toasty. I would use my chainmail gloves. Um, however, I then don't have any sort of uh, grip with the punch. Sadly, that's not where they shine. You don't get much grip from the punch with them. You know, with anything you're holding, it's just a little bit slippery. Not enough sticktivity. So, I'll cool this down. Just want something to there we go. You see, it is loose. It's there we go. It was so loose that all I had to do was just push it with a punch and the little plug came out. Beautiful. Great. Now we're going to put it back in the fire. We're going to punch the next hole. And then we'll make sure it's all straight before moving it around, I guess. Unless I, yeah, I might do some work on that other end there. That could work. We'll see. We'll see. Still plenty of work to go. What well, fun. It's nice to be making a little bit of a bigger project on the live show. Nice to be doing a little forge project. And of course, just fantastic. Just brilliant to have you all here for the day as well. So I hope you've all been well. Obviously, this week, busy, busy week of heavy, heavy forging hard work. Been really excited with the videos I was able to get out nonetheless. You know, a worry of mine as I knew that I have all these hammers to make is, oh goodness. How am I going to get good videos done? And you know, it's been a struggle, obviously, because I'm trying to focus as much on this as possible, make sure that the hammers coming out are good hammers. But I'm, I'm still pleased with it, and I'm very pleased to hear that the feedback from you guys was, uh, was, was, was pretty good. So I was very appreciative for all the wonderful comments, all the likes, all the shares, that kind of stuff. It makes me very happy uh, to know that even this kind of, you know, somewhat more laborious work 
can indeed make a good video. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. It's been a lot of fun and uh, it's been a great way to keep the old sanity when you're doing 70 of the old thing, you know, move a, move a camera around, uh, you know, talk to people on the Twitch live streams I've been doing behind the scenes. It's a great way, to, great way to make it a little bit more fun. So thank you guys for doing that. Right, let's take another heat. Let's see if we can pop a hole through it. Oh, it's not quite hot enough. So wait a little, wait a little longer. Running the forge is slightly lower pressure, which is nice. It's gonna make it a, a, a little more pleasant. A little, a little more pleasant for your ears there. Now, how is this gonna look if I do that? Now, I think that's gonna be a fabulous shot. There you can see the rigger gloves I was talking about. I think I, is that a right-hander or a left-hander? That's a right-hander. Um, sadly, I don't have any left hand. You, you wear out the left a lot more than you do the right if you're a blacksmith and you're right-handed. Do do do. Uh, make sure we're all good. Fantastic. 1,800 of you kind people. Question, if you had any tool you don't already own, what would it be? It's a fantastic question. I have no idea. I don't know. I have a lot of tools. I don't know what tools I need. Oh, I know. What I need, I've seen this in Simple Little Life's videos, and I, I just haven't got around to buying one, is it's like an articulated um, tube, and then you have a little like Dremel-type tool on the end of it. I think he called it like a Fordom, Fordom, something like this. Fordom, so I need to buy one of those at some point. That's a tool that I think I need um, for any, any of the kind of finer, detailed stuff on any of the, of, the, of the projects I'm working on. One of those and some good tools. So I'll have to get one of those at some point. Aside from that, I'm pretty well sorted. Um, so I'm very, uh, very pleased in that regard. Is it possible to make skull pattern Damascus? That'd be very tricky, very scary. When am I doing another pre-order for hammers? Asks Larry Williamson. Um, I have no idea. Uh, my plan is obviously to be putting as much focus into the YouTube videos as possible. And so I'll likely be uh, somewhat preoccupied from doing hammer pre-orders. I might occasionally, you know, make a few and put them up for sale, very rarely. Um, so I have no idea when the next hammer pre-order will be. I apologize for that. So, I'm gonna take my punch. And punch through it. Take it out every time. Have a look at the hole developing. Let the punch cool. Take my time, relax as we go. Boom, we're about to reach the anvil. Lovely, so what I do when I reach the anvil, I flip it upside down. You see there's that bullseye on the back there. Uh, a little overexposed, I apologize, but there's a bullseye on the back. Hammer it back down the flat. Reestablish, I'll switch you over to the next feed. Right now, boom, boom, boom. There we go, ladies and gents. Welcome back. If you just joined us, we're making a floral themed coat hook, coat rack, something like that, two hook coat rack. It's gonna be a blast. Thank you for being here. Be sure to comment below any questions you have. If I'm just at the computer, hopefully I'll catch them and be able to answer them. Otherwise, plenty of other folks who are always wonderfully very attentive to the questions that you all ask in the comments below, they'll often be able to help you out. We're streaming on Twitch and YouTube right now. And I have an itchy nose. And, uh, there we go. Swimming on oh, blah, blah, blah. Streaming on Twitch and YouTube right now. Twitch, obviously, if you're unfamiliar, started out as a live streaming platform for video gamers. Um, and now they're starting to try and expand into creatives. And so they kind of got in touch with me and, you know, asked me to give it a try, and I have been, and I've been very much enjoying it. It's been very fun hanging out with everybody on Twitch. So if any of you guys ever want to see the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a vlog, that's how you do it. We do those streams quite regularly, and I sillily didn't drop a link in the description. However, if you go there, and it's twitch.tv forward slash Alex Steele, so you can quite easily find me. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue at all to find me there. So, and, that, and that's cool, you know, every so often or, you know, most days, try and do a good stream there. That'll be lots of fun to have you here. Uh, 
let me mess with my exposure there. That seems a little bit better. So I'm having a look at this and I'm trying to decide the next step. Now, what might be the next step? I think I'm going to start forging all this before I split the rest. That might be useful. It might get in the way, but it might then end up being a good handle for me. So we're going to do that. Now, my plan is I'm going to split both ends and on one on the top, I'm going to draw it out and hopefully forge a calla lily. Then on the bottom, I'm going to draw it out and forge a leaf and punch a hole in the leaf. Then the other two tabs, you know, so, it, so it's going to be calla lily, leaf, tab, hole for anchoring into the wall, tab, hole for anchoring into the wall. So there should be kind of, you know, three main anchor points, the leaf, the other two tabs. Hopefully keep it, you know, relatively, relatively structurally sound. Relatively. And so I, I need to basically forge a leaf now, is my thunken. So I'm going to also dress the tab area up a little bit. I'll punch the holes in that. And, uh, and yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be, it's going to be good fun. So welcome everybody. Outstanding. I was very thrilled to see Wranglestar mention me in his video about Liam Hoffman's axe. That was extremely exciting. Um, I won't quite do a full recreation of my reaction when I heard somebody I've been watching on YouTube for years and years and years say my name. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little insight that um, it, was, it was a very high-pitched squeal and then I might have jumped up and down a little bit. Uh, you know. Just like fangirled a little bit, <laughs> you know. Hey, don't judge. I'm joking. You can judge me. You can judge me. Please go for it. I did indeed fangirl a little bit over that mention, so that was pretty cool. And uh, I, I was even more thrilled to hear that uh, he and his son both enjoy watching the videos. And that and that, that that just makes me really happy. I'm always so thrilled when um, when when parents are saying that they like watching the videos with their kids. That makes me just ecstatic. So, I'm just gonna texture this area. I'm not really looking to forge down the tab area too much. I just wanna make it look like it's a little more interesting. I think, maybe. Yeah, that could do it. Oh, that's one for the Alex Steel drinking game. If you're on Twitch, remember, exclamation point drink. There are some cool features to that site which I'm enjoying. Now, might that be a cool thing to do? I think that might be. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to play with this. Play with, play with making an interesting little finial there. Woo! It's getting warm here today. I think I might open. I'm going to open my door. Get some cool air in here. And I'm going to turn on the fan. Um, that'll be brutally hot. Uh, brutally loud, pardon me. Oh, goodness. What a lovely, cool evening it is here in Norwich. Just bloody brilliant. So welcome everybody. If you're new, we're making a floral themed wall hook assembly and hooks and coat rack things and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm very pleased that you're here. Ah, man, it is toasty. Let me get some more water and stay hydrated here. I just can't quite read the chat from here. Maybe if I zoom in a little. I might just. I think I'm just about gonna be able to read the chat from, uh, from over there. Wonderful. I think I might just about be able to read it. Do 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 do. Somebody just called me a sellout. What did you call me a sellout for? That's funny. My boy is amazed. <laughs> that is so weird.
Yeah, everybody on the internet as soon as that's it's Yeah, my water bottle is framed very nicely to look like an ad. I realized that just as I was down there at the computer. It's not. I mean, it's a pretty decent water bottle, but I paid for it. <laughs> hmm, this could be interesting. I'm just messing around here, of course. You know, this is this is part of all the fun. So I'm just kind of hammering this corner in. Just trying to see how it looks. See see how the steel moves with it. I'll flatten it down. Ah, not quite as interesting as I thought it might end up being once I flattened it. That's okay. I still think that a little taper on there will be better than uh, better than nothing. So I'll keep keep working that, hammering that corner into itself. Take another little quick heat there. And soon be ready to punch some holes. I'll probably punch two holes in each tab there. Hello from Sydney. Staying up into the early morning to catch the live show. You're doing a ripper job. Big thumbs up. Well, thank you very much, Zach2591. I sincerely appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do, 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 do. Who's mad in the comments? Somebody's always mad in the comments. This is funny. Fabulous. What fun, ladies and gentlemen. So thrilled to have you all here. That's fantastic to hear. Double Chen, apparently Brown Brazil's gonna give him a Class, that's utterly fantastic. Where's Sam? He is absent. He's abandoned us for the week. He's on holiday with his family, which is jolly good. Hmm, interesting. It, it's, it's always fun to experiment with forging and I guess this would similar kind of technique to what some horseshoers might do on a piece of steel. Potentially a little more exaggerated. Oh, I dropped it. Drink. Okay. Now I think I'll put a little chamfer here. Chamfer here. Chamfer here. Chamfer here. And there. That looks relatively interesting. And now, I'm going to mark it out for some holes. So this can come in here. Or do I bend it first? I probably have to bend it first, in all honesty. So I need to, I'm going to need to do a little offset bend to account for the rivets. And I think I'm going to do that here on the step of the anvil. So I'm going to make those offset bends right now. And it'll just be on that one, and then we'll be able to start on the rest of it. We'll see how it goes. All good fun. All good fun. No, Sam's on holiday today. Those of you asking, Sam's not in today. No, no. Dustin Rainey, thank you very much. Very appreciate the little super chat there. Any chance you could overlay the chat onto the video for those of what's watching in full screen? Um, I, I probably could. It's probably in the realm of possibility. Um, I, I worry about whether that would detract from the overall video and, the, and, and, and what you're seeing. Sorry. I apologize for keeping on advertising. Uh, uh, now I can't even say their name. Otherwise, you guys are going to think I'm advertising them. <laughs> Whew. Really pleased that you and your wife enjoy watching my work. Billy Maddox, great having you here. So, let's see how this works. 
let's see how this goes. I'm gonna hold that like this. That works rather admirably. Quite happy with that. Nice little offset, simple way of going about that. <laughs> really quite rather happy with how that turned out and pleasantly surprised at how easy that was. That little offset that went just exactly as I could have hoped. <laughs> so that's a surprise, that doesn't always happen. Lovely, nice. Now I can mark it out for punching holes, but I tell you what, I'm jolly well annoyed I don't have a uh, tongue clip, and I really do need one. So what I'm gonna do is for the next 20 seconds, I'm gonna have a proper hunt for a tongue clip. So I'm gonna root through all these tools, see is there a tongue clip? Is there a tongue clip? Tongue clip, tongue clip, tongue clip, tongue clip, tongue clip. Come on now. Who stole my tongue clip? Fess up, who did it? Like, most likely just on the floor somewhere. That's where most of my tools are. Huh. I, I treat these things as relatively consumable. I go through, I lose so many of them. Oh, is it, no, nope, it's not there. Okay. Problem. I will keep searching. Still searching. My 30 seconds is about to elapse though. I don't know what I'm gonna do if I can't find a tongue clip. I'll just have to make do. But it would be jolly nice if I'd found it. Oh! Reality. How she doesn't care. Okay, there is no tongue clip. It's official. There is no tongue clip. I'm gonna have to do what I knew I'd have to do. And that is start digging for tongue clips. Come on. There's gotta be a tongue clip in here somewhere. Any there? No. Oh, found one. It was on the anvil. Literally right under my nose. Okay. So. Now that I can put a tongue clip on this, I feel a little safer about getting on. I bet you guys were commenting. You were probably all seeing it there, weren't you? I should have, should have gone to the comments. I knew you guys would have found it out. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and visualize where two holes might look good. I think that'd look pretty good. So I'm just going to this. Nope, that didn't work. Um, that'll still serve a purpose though. So now what I'm going to do is find a center line. Very crude uh, method of marking. Now bear in mind, a lot of you, a lot of you uh, machinist types have gone a little fussy about me using calipers to scribe my work, which is ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. Because, firstly, I don't know why people care about other people's calipers so much. It's amazing how much other people care, uh, whatever. But secondly, I use my calipers uh, specifically for different things. These calipers I use for marking out material, like this. I find it's a very efficient and quick uh, way to mark my material. So I use those calipers exclusively for that. Um, I have calipers that I use for measuring accurately that I would never ever so briskly pull across a piece of metal. Of course, that's a given. You know, it does damage the calipers and these calipers were in fact much longer in the beginning and they've been ground down as they continuously wear. I have to grind them down so that they, you know, have a semblance of accuracy when I do use them as a scribe. Hey, it's not the right way to use a caliper, but I tell you what, it works absolutely admirably for what I'm trying to use this particular set of calipers for. I really don't see any problem with taking a tool and using it for what the hell you want to use the tool for. What's wrong with that? Absolutely. You're going to damage the accuracy of a pair of calipers, but who cares? It's like, it's like five pounds. Goodness gracious.
<laughs> Great comment on Twitch. Oh my goodness. You aren't doing things the way I do them, so you're automatically wrong in all things, and my opinion must be heard. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Tyler Rice, thank you very much. Does the evolution of toolmaking class cover annealing, hardening, and tempering for different tools and metals? Um, it goes for the evolution of toolmaking class. It's all, it's, it's, relatively basic tool making in the sense that there's very little hardening and very little tempering that needs to be covered. Um, what you need to know to do the evolution of tool making class, however, it does cover in the depth that you need it covered to make those tools to a good, good standard. How about some Damascus stripper bars the next time they break? That'd be pretty exciting. Um, I think we'll just stick with the normal steel though. I'm sure it'll work just fine. And I don't know how much longer my channel would exist if I was to delve into stripper bars too much more often in my videos. I'm sure you all appreciate the... Uh... Somebody new here is like, what on earth? This is... This is the weirdest channel ever. Blacksmithing and talking about stripper bars. Whew, no idea what's going on here. Um, well, the fact of the matter is, is that there's a tool that we use here in the workshop uh, called stripper bars for stripping off hammerheads from a punch once it gets stuck. Um, and so I had to make some stripper bars this week, and that's why it's, uh, it's that's why it's a point of discussion here on the channel today. Whew. Hello, everybody. Great having you all here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, that bottomed it out. Okay, I'll do the same to the other one. Flip it over. Oh, it actually poked through from that one side. I'm gonna go straight into, straight into the rear. Don't need, to, don't need to go back in from the first again. I definitely get a plug out of this in probably three blows. If not two, nope. Didn't quite get it. Oh no, I did. Plug came right out. Would you look at that? And now I have to get access to this hole. It's going to be a little difficult. I've got to kind of just about angle it at a really weird angle. Watch it, Drew M. Smith. I'll take away your admin rights. Goodness gracious. I'm now going to go into this next one. However, the hole does go slightly all the way through. I went a little deep with it, so I might not get a plug. I might get a little unclean hole. Well, I don't know where it went. It's vanished. It might be on the end of my punch. It's on the end of my punch. It is! The plug was stuck to the end of my punch. You can see it has a little tiny hole in it. Perhaps. No, you can't see, it's far too small. But it has a little tiny hole in it, but it still came out nonetheless, which is very exciting. Okay. So I can deal with this in the remnants of another heat. For now, on here, I need to start drawing this down, um, pulling out a lot of material and forging a leaf from it. This is gonna be pretty exciting. Now, this is a very flat end on it, right there, a very flat end. If I start trying to forge a taper on it, I'm gonna get fish lips. So what I'm going to do, to avoid the fish lipping, oh goodness, is I'm going to take a rasp. Uh, you guys might not have an angle on it, but I'm basically just going to take a rasp and I'm going to rasp over the edges. Uh, you know what? Goodness gracious, why would I have you guys here and not go to the efforts of getting you an angle? You're all here for a reason. You're all here for some forging goodness. You're not here to hear me mining the forging goodness. So, we're sorted. What I'm doing, great. Rough side of my rasp, roughing a chamfer onto it, like this. This is the coarse side of the rasp, indeed. You notice how I have the rasp, like I was saying earlier, I have the rasp moving before I touch it. Ah. There we go, that's going to avoid most if not all of the fish lipping, putting that little bit of a radius right there. So now we're going to go back in the forge and we're going to start drawing 
that out. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. This is a lot of fun. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. I hope that, you know, if you're at work and you're, you're watching this in the background, you're enjoying the noises of blacksmithing. It is a really, really fun and exciting craft. Just so thrilling that we live in a, we live in a day and age where we have 1,600 of you guys tuning in and watching this show. Like, that's just unbelievable that this technology exists and that this uh, incredible gathering of people interested in seeing things made by hand can happen. So thanks guys for being here. And what a, what a, what a great time it is to be alive. Bloody fantastic. Ba -da -ba -ba. Make, a, make a cut out of Sam so folks will think he's here. I think we need to make that happen. We're going to have to get a little cardboard cut out of Sam. That would be fantastic. Hello, Luis Molina from Venezuela. Goodness, hope you're doing all right. Uh, Joseph Riggs, do you still have your Texas flag? Of course I have my Texas flag, Joseph Riggs. Still, still displayed up in the workshop. Oh, it looks like I make sure I didn't miss something here. What's going on? Got any ideas for the samurai steel box? I have no ideas yet. I have all these hammers to make. I'm planning to make that my priority. Um, once I have all the hammers made, hopefully then I'll be able to start really putting some thought into the box. Do -do -do. What's this? Comments coming in, everybody. Fantastic. Great having you all here. Great having you all here. From Greece, from Denmark, hello. Great. Back to work we go. We've got some hot steel. I'm going to start moving the hot steel around. This is going to be a blast. Let's uh, go ahead and zoom you out. Thank you, Marco Carpagnano. I don't know if that was the correct pronunciation. He'll be sure to tell me if I missed it. I think I've tried to pronounce your name before, haven't I? Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and try and bend that out. This is going to be a little bit of an annoying thing to try and move around. Got a good view? Yeah, we're all good. We're all good, we're peachy. No problems. So, I'm going to be working kind of on the diagonals here because it's a lot easier to access it like this than it is another way. I'm trying to just break that down. Now I can come in here and attack it. You know, it's just so difficult to have the access that I'd want. I'm now next heat going to go and run onto the horn to do the rest of that. I've now broken it down, gone a little bit further up into the, into the crotch of the cut. I hate to have to say it, but that's what it's called. <laughs> so we've got a little further up into the crotch of the cut. I'm going to draw down some more material. That's going to enable me to then step back on the near edge of the anvil, go back into the crotch, keep working it, and uh, this should be a hoot. Sure to be a hoot. Hello from Albania. Tim Betsky. Jake Pryor is here from Canada. Fantastic. 7K Metalworks is asking for some accents. Hey, did you get the carbide yet, 7K? Uh, 7K Metalworks is asking for some accents. We're going to be relegating that to the Twitch streams. So be sure to go follow me on Twitch if you want to get any fun accents. You know, what I'm going to do, this camera right here, the, uh, uh, the exposure has been changing ever so slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to manual exposure and I'm going to adjust my aperture, set it so that I like it, because I noticed that as I move, the uh, program auto is changing how I'm being exposed. I think I prefer that a little bit more. Hello, everybody. This isn't the American flag belt buckle, S. John Stonev. This is uh, explosion pattern Damascus. Fantastic 7K, please, that you got the carbide. Very, very exciting. Woo! Hello from Chile, Hector Ulloa. I don't know if I pronounced it right. 
we just got to give it a try. Here, we go. So, I'm going to come onto the horn here. Off to the race as we go. And I am tripping over tools. But we shall persevere. Lovely, jubbly. Great. Now that I've broken it down a little bit, come back into the, I'll say, root of the tape. Root of the taper. See if I can avoid having to say crotch on a live stream. Oh, too late. He's already done it. See if we can work some of this material in there a little bit. Ooh, missed hit there. Little miss hit. Fixing it. Working on getting this nice and pretty. That could be interesting. I'm pretty tired. Oh, making all these hammers has been wearing me out. It's been a long, long week. Been so pleased to be getting those good videos out there. That's been extraordinarily exciting. I'm looking forward to having a little bit of a day off tomorrow. I've got a long drive to do. I've got to drive to London and back first thing. But I'm looking forward to the rest of the day being a day off. And, uh, and that's going to be good. I'm going to try and make that a regular thing. Try and have a day off. Worked myself to the, to the, uh, to the bone past nine months here. And it's been thrillingly exciting to do all of that. But uh, it's going to be great to have some days off, especially as the summer comes. Some of you guys that were here very early on in the channel will remember in uh, last summer, made uh, quite a number of videos where I was, you know, up at the coast enjoying the weather, enjoying the British summertime. And as the British summertime begins to resume, I hope to, uh, I hope to be doing a lot more of that, you know, so that's going to be exciting. Go and enjoy, uh, enjoy the coast a little bit, a day, a week or so, and it's going to be just bloody brilliant. Cat's Eye 1000, have you seen Mrs. Brown's Boys? I don't know what that is. New subscriber, Francis Lawrence, really pleased that you're enjoying the videos. That's just fantastic. You should make a map and pin where your viewers live. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Ba -ba -ba. Hello from Michigan, Johnny Asava. How are you doing? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. The weather in the Alex Steele chat is just fine. That's good. The Twitch, ch the Twitch chat is uh, a lot slower. That's nice. I can read those a little bit easier. Somebody's saying something about blades. That it's just so fast on the YouTube comments. I can hardly keep up. Okay. So, and if I come in here, not quite. Back here I go. Work the base of that tape up. Do -do -do. Ba -ba. Uh, I think that can look pretty nice. I can just, oh, I'm trying to work out how I can access it. Ooh, my knees just went. Okay, solution found. Lovely jubbly. I'm going to come right over here. Hammer, boom, that down, hammer this down. Make it just a little wider than 90 degrees. Lovely. Now that's going to give me much easier access. So we'll take another heat. God, what fun this is. I'm really, really pleased with how this is going. Hello, everybody. Uh, what the Forge, you guys on Twitch are asking about my Forge and why I don't use a third burner. Um, I, I have no need for the third burner. Those two burners have done just fine. Uh, my plan with that forge build, sorry, wiping the sweat off my face. My plan with the forge that I'm using when I built it was to have three burners. I thought I'd need three burners, one of them being a T-Rex, uh, which is a great other Venturi burner, and the other two being um, the burners that I was selling and then now Sam is selling at forgeburners.com. But I ended up not needing three burners. I ended up overheating a lot of steel with three. Thank you very much, Peter Naraki. Naraki. Niemi, did he Norwegian kroners or something? Presume from Norway. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Marco Carfagnano. Some people. Thanks, Alec. You said it correctly. Most don't. Love your beautiful content as always. It's second to none. Hugely motivating. 
Thank you very much, Marco Carpagnano. Let me know if I said it right the second time. You don't need to leave another super chat, it's fine. I'll hopefully catch it if you say it right now. New subscriber here from New Hampshire. Gotta say, you sir are always good for a chuckle. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate that. Just bloody fantastic having you all here. Jacob Drescher from Holland. Jason Berg. Stephen Bennett. How long have I been smithing? I've been blacksmithing for eight years or so. Eight years or so. Still waiting. Still waiting. Did I get the pronunciation right the second time? Yes, I did it correctly again, Marco Caparniano. That one might have been a little, a little too rolled. Rolled it off a little too fast. What can I say? Yeah, that's good. That's where I want it. Let's see if I can get a pretty interesting transition going on there in the crotch. Bloody good. The crotch is looking marvelous. I'm very pleased about that. Let me see if I have a... Oh, goodness. Little cross peen, perhaps. Here we go. Let's see what that'll do. I think that's going to be just an admirable tool for the job of doing the final refining here in the crotch. Perfect. Jolly fantastic. Thrilled with how this is going over on this end. Right, so now what I need to do is I need to get a little more thinness. That's a word. Thinness right here. So I'm going to take a heat. I'm going to be drawing it down again on the horn. However, as I get close up here, I'm going to end up going edge on edge, maybe here, maybe on the horn, we'll see. But I'm going to do some drawing, leaving mass. Oh no, change of plan. First thing I'm going to do while it's thick is I'm going to forge a taper on the end of this so that when I have drawn it out, I'm not then forging a taper and bending it all around. Funny comments about the crotch coming in. It's a technical term for the transition between the two prongs. Thank you very much, Uni Distarka. I'm really, really pleased. I'll say hello to your wife, Georg Sinov. How much propane does my forge use? Um, I'll usually burn about 20, uh, 25 kilograms a day or so. Yeah, about 25 kilograms a day of propane. Uh, but I'm running a very big forge and I'm running two burners at a time. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more propane than you might use if you were, uh, if you were using a one-man forge, because this forge is enormous. It's far too big for, for what I need. <laughs> Great comments coming in, guys. It's awesome having you all here. So, I'm going to come right here. Boom. 90 degrees with each blow. It's a little difficult. What I'm going to do to make it easier is kick all my tools away, change my grip, and now come on to the diagonal. Here we go. Now I'm forging 45 degrees to the square I had. That's much easier for me to attack it without having to do such a massive uh, change in angle of my hand uh, on the left hand there. Though it's still 90 degrees, it's a lot easier. Beautiful. What fun. We're working that material down nice and easily. I was very pleased to make that decision. Woo! Here we go. Line it up. Okay, great. Come back into the, a little closer up to the base of the taper so we get a better transition. Now I'm going to go onto the diagonal. Ha, diagonal. <laughs> Who says that? Apparently me. Onto the diagonal we go. And then onto the next diagonal. There we go, yes. And then the last one. Try and make it a little bit natural and rough and jolly bloody cool. Thrilled with that. Nice and rough and chunky looking. Makes it look like it's some sort of growth coming out of a piece of wood. Great, I love it. Love how those hammer marks are looking. Whew, feeling great. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do the taper, I'm an idiot. I told you guys I was gonna do a taper on the end, I completely forgot, oh well. I'll have to make do, gotta do the taper now. 
That was silly. Well, hey ho, we can't always get everything right. <laughs> the moral of the story there. Goodness gracious. Woo! What fun. Ba -da -bum. Thank you again, Uni Distaker. Really appreciate it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. So, Mighty Projects. Uh oh, I just. What, what did I just do? I accidentally got rid of it. He asked, Did my parents get me into blacksmithing? Um, there's no. My great grandfather was a blacksmith and farrier, actually, a farrier in the Second World War. Um, however, there's no kind of like direct family history to blacksmithing in terms of, you know, a father being a blacksmith or anything like that. Um, however, getting into blacksmithing at age 11, you know, of course, like getting permission to be able to do that is a, a very kind thing. And so that certainly helped. And of course, you know, with you know, Christmas and birthday money, I was able to buy my first anvil and my first forge and things like that. So yeah, lots of help starting out as a very young gun. Uh, but in terms of how I got all this equipment, I got all this equipment because I've been running a business for three years or so, which has mean that I've had opportunity to invest in my business, as all businesses generally do. I'm very pleased that you want to learn blacksmithing, Mikey1324. Could somebody do, I think it's exclamation point learn in the Twitch chat. Fantastic. So, what I'm now going to do, ah, forge a table. That's fine, it's not gonna bend around too much. Woo, you saw that. And right here, another taper, boom. Lovely, jolly good, fantastic. And back we go, taper. I missed completely and hit the anvil. Taper, a little bit of a tricky one to, to maneuver around because of all the angles. It is bending a little bit, not, not critically. Lovely jubbly. Okay. Now, I can't really put in the vise too well. However, I did get a little fish lipping. So I just filed off the fish lipping. Jolly good. Whoo, what fun. Filed off the fish lipping there. And back we go into the, you know what I need? I need a rest my material as I go into the forge. <sighs> so I'm going to switch you guys around there so you can see a little bit of what I'm doing maybe. So I'm going to grab this like char. Oh, breaking things. We're going to, oh it is hot right here. Do I have a fan mail address or P.O. box? Uh, I don't. I don't. I just have my workshop. Um, if you, uh, which, I mean, a lot of you guys often ask if you can send things to me, which is very kind of you. If you ever do want to, want to send anything and you're from overseas, just please make sure it isn't anything of value over like $25. Otherwise, I have to go pick it up and pay an import tax on it, which is thoroughly annoying. Do 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 do. I need to move you guys over. They're in the wrong place. That was a very rude way of saying, you know, thank you very much for the people that want to send me things. <laughs> I'm sure you can appreciate that. Brilliant, Blake. I really appreciate that uh, you like the Damascus and the weird creations. What is the weirdest thing that I've ever made off camera? Goodness gracious. I don't know. Um, I didn't really make a lot of weird things. And like everything that I make goes on camera, at least since July. Royder Phillips, nine year old, says hello. Hello, Royder Phillips, nine year old. How are you doing? Connor, welcome, Connor, to the stream. Great that you're watching. So thrilled when young people are watching. It just makes me so happy. Brilliant. Damascus lingerie is not happening, ladies and gentlemen. Goodness gracious. So. Come 
come in here, see if I can do edge on edge. Ah! I missed. Very difficult to do this. Now it's one off and on edge on edge. Work it up. Ah! Missed it. Hammer, 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 hammer. Outstanding. No flags left, sadly. Where do we buy hammers? None available, sadly. We're making a coat hanger. Mega Man's dog on Twitch. Damascus folding cleaver. Now that's an interesting idea. Let me go ahead and check something right here. I'm gonna sit down here while this heats up. Ba -da -ba. Make sure we're all good on the Twitch stream. Oh, goodness. I don't know how to work this. Too much technology. I want to see how many people are watching on Twitch. 316 viewers, outstanding. We've got 1,500 on YouTube, outstanding. Jesse Brugemans, il veut que je dise quelque chose en français. Alors donc, je l'ai dit. Mais mon français, il n'est pas super. Je ne parle pas très souvent. Alors c'est diffi difficile à, à continuer de parler. we go, work on up to the shoulders, over that far edge, there we go, okay. Once I just, there we go, beautiful, got it. Now I, I just keep tripping up on that near side. Beautiful. Okay, now it's reduced, I can now go up to that shoulder again. What fun this is! Sam is on holiday. Merci beaucoup, Mathieu Bilanger. Can't speak any Spanish though. Merci beaucoup, Leader Edge. I appreciate it. Can he forge a Damascus face ripper? Jeez Louise. Xander the gamer, you're killing me. That's a great way to... <laughs> Goodness gracious. Andy Blake, what broadband do you have to stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time? Well, I had much better broadband, um, but I have worse broadband now. They, they think they've downgraded the service or, you know, whatever it is, but I have half the upload speed. So now what I'm doing to stream to YouTube and Twitch is I'm going to like a separate server and then that server is then splitting it off for me. Which helps and which is easy. I'm not hiring Saul, sadly. Can I speak French with a Quebecois accent? Probably not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say probably not. I've, I've heard a couple of you guys speak and I tell you what, it doesn't sound like French to me. And I have no idea how I'd replicate it. I've not heard it enough to... To, to, to really know how to replicate it. Okay. So, difficult here to try and isolate off a shoulder with just the hand hammer, because this is flat stock, you know, essentially. I can't do the two-sided tape as I'd like to do quite as easily as I, as, as, as I want. This seems to be a little more sensible way of going about it, but it's still extraordinarily difficult. Got to do edge on edge blows. Yeah, I think that'll work though. You know, it's, it's just, it takes some getting used to. Okay, let's brush it. I'm now gonna finish the stem. So I'm gonna rough it out on the horn now. So I'm gonna move, move the camera shot 
rough the stem up a little bit. Brilliant. I haven't really been using number three. We'll just be fine with two, two cameras. It'll be, it'll be just fine. Sorry for anybody that I made queasy yesterday um, with uh, the GoPro footage. Hope you guys are all okay. You got over your sickness. Hope nobody's about to sue me for making them feel seasick because they couldn't look away from a computer screen. Oh, I'm just mocking you ever so slightly. Just mocking you ever so slightly. Do -do 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 -do. Paxton Wheeler, what am I making? Look at the stream title. It says right there. I really appreciate you asking. Because you went to the effort of typing it out, I'll let you know. What I'm making is, is I'm making like a floral inspired coat rack. So it's gonna be pretty fun. Hello from Germany, Frozen XD. Damascus 50 BMG barrel. Now that would be cool. That would be cool. You would not want any any uh, any weld inclusions though. So I'm just gonna run this around. Ah, there we go. You would wanna make sure your welds were pretty damn good. Freaking put a 50 caliber round through it. Work up to that shoulder again. You know, that horn is not a necessarily a terrible place to, to make edge on Ed's shoulders. But nice, it's all roughed out, boom. Give it a couple more random hammer marks. And I like it, this is gonna be pretty sick. Next heat, we're gonna come in with a cross peen hammer. First thing, that shoulder could be a little tidier. A little sharp edge on this particular cross peen. Next heat, we're gonna work on that Yep, a doodle, snicker poodle. Great having everybody here. Thank you for joining me on this little live show. Phew. Jesse Lyles, the Damascus drywall hatchet would be cool for you to make in a video. That's pretty cool. Now that's a very peculiar request, very specific, very cool. I wanna see a Damascus 50 gallon barrel. Aegon 1, do you still sell at Creek Abbey Market? Well, there's a little blast from the past. No, I don't, sadly. Very impressed. You must have seen me at Creek Abbey. Well, I haven't, haven't been at Creek Abbey in bloody two years selling there. That's funny. I'm always amazed at how many local people watch these videos. It's great having you here. Can you tell me why the grooves in all your hammers? It's an aesthetic thing, um, and it, it's, it's just part of, the, part of the look of the hammer. Thank you very much, Mikey1324, I really appreciate that. Damascus Spaceship, yeah, that's coming tomorrow, Zander. Really appreciate you asking. Okay, so I'm now gonna come in here with a cross pin and see what we can do with this. There we go. Trying to avoid hitting the stem, he says, just as he hits the stem. I tell you what, goodness gracious, I should move that camera around. Give you guys a little bit of a better angle. What fun. Thank you very much, Austin Lauer. I really appreciate the little super chat there. Very kind of yourself. Very kind of yourself. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Hello from Kentucky. Shane Chitwood, appreciate you watching. Great having you here. It's great having you all here. It's a blast. Get to share some blacksmithing and making and all this fun stuff with the world. What could there be that's better? Woo! Hello, Higgity. What is the worst injury you've had in the workshop? A friend almost cut a finger of mine off once. Uh, that'll be a story for another day. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Damascus Death Star. I love it. I love it. Nice texture. I'm liking how it's looking.
Oh nice, got some cracks in there too. That's pretty cool. Great. Coming onto this side of the stem. Nice cracks all over that leaf. That's pretty funny. Not usually how cracks happen on a leaf. So I'm, I'm excited to one day know why that happened. For now, however, oh, look what happens when you put a tool in your beeswax and you forget to take it out before the beeswax solidifies. You then have a fused beeswax tool combo that's very annoying. Hello, Marco Campagnago, Pagnago, pa Carpagnano, sorry, got it right this time. Forge Damascus Cuddle Reset, that's an interesting idea, pretty tough though. And especially general eating utensils, um, take a lot of, appreciate it. Whoever just left that last donation, just left, thank you very much for the five bucks, appreciate it. Have you ever used a coal forge to make a knife? I, I, I actually never really made any knives until I had a gas forge. If you want a high carbon steel blade and a soft spine, you can weld on the blade because welding beads are high carbon. I, okay, that doesn't particularly make too much sense. Welding beads aren't that high carbon. How about a Damascus face mask? Now that's a hell of an idea. Guys, I'm, I'm, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a stop on Damascus steel, like for the whole of June. Just saying. Is it true anybody who gives a thousand dollars in Super Chat automatically gets something made from Damascus from you? Not strictly, I mean, you can always work something out. You can make you a pendant. Probably rather you just PayPal it to me though. So I think YouTube takes a cut of the super chat. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo -doo. So, somehow I have to hold this between my, oh. Okay, this is a problem. This is, this is not best practice. But I tell you what, it's bloody well working. Ha! It works a charm! <laughs> Apart from the fact that I didn't put the stool on very level ground. So it kind of feels like I'm about to fall off. Don't do this at home, kids. Oh! Okay. Almost there. I didn't quite line it up. So since I can't punch from the back side, I have to line it up over a hole to try and punch somewhat of a plug. Almost there. Ah. Okay. I'm now going to get down. And please, I beg none of you to do what I just did. <laughs> Megaman's dog. I've dialed 9-1 and my finger is on the 1. That's funny. Hey, this is England. It's 999. Have you made or do you know of what a tank drum is so you can make one. I don't know what you're talking about. So that didn't quite come out of there. Ah. How am I gonna do this? See if I can kind of work hard on the plug a little bit. Gently hammering on it, it's not damaging the leaf, but it should mean that I can come back in here again, hopefully with a little bit of a heavier hammer. Not a little pansy one. Oh, it just insulted a lot of people who don't like wearing, don't like wearing, using heavier hammers. Hashtag burn. Hashtag I don't really care that much. What size hammer do you use? Oh. Hashtag, hashtag. Whew! Okay, so I got a plug out of there. We're good. We're gonna drop down. Smith's son's first cattle branding was today at 16 months old. 
16 months old. That's very cool. Wait, the son or the cattle? I presume the son was 15 months old. If it works, it works. Take care of your ears, Alec. What? I can't hear you. Get out of that. Great. Uh, that'll have to be rasped off after the fact. For that to work. Clean up the back. Oh, goodness. The innuendos are just terrible in this craft. God, I can't... Cleaning up the opposite face of the leaf. There we go. How about that? Just about got there without every single parent with their child listening having to cover the ears of their child. Just about made it there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, moving swiftly on, the son was 16 months old. That's so cool. That is just fantastic. Ba -da -ba. Great, I love having these comments right here. It's great being able to... Uh, Great being able to have you all here so close. You can actually probably put you closer next time. Make it a little easier to read them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to straighten all that out. I'm actually first going to just kind of sit down. Just for a sec. Oh, goodness. I'm having fun. Are you guys having fun? Woo! Oh, sorry. Yeah, you guys couldn't see it on the zoomed-in camera. Apologies. Ba, 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 ba. Hello from Canada, found your channel through the Samurai. Thank you, Jim Dockerell. I'm very pleased to hear that. That's fantastic. RMD off-roading when you're done with the hammers. You should make an axe for Wrangler Star. I don't think I want to make an axe for Wrangler Star because there's no way I can compete with what Liam Hoffman made him. The axe he, the axes he make are just like, the quality spewing out of every single square millimeter. So I can't, I can't, I can't put an axe that I made into Wrangler Star's hand. I've got to do something different after he's touched a bloody Liam Hoffman axe. Thank God his Twitch has started working. Good. Hello, Higgity. Welcome back. New Smith is soon going to be on. Hello. Fantastic. Why don't you have a leather apron? Do you not need one? I don't really need one, to be honest. I, I prefer being a little bit like this. Am I Michael McIntyre's son? I, I, I've been trying to... I'm going to have to nail the impression soon because I know I look a little bit like him. I've, I'll, I'll nail the... I'll name... Oh, blah, 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 blah. That. Blah, 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 blah. I will nail the impression soon. Soon I will nail the impression and it will be great. Um, however, no, I'm not Michael McIntyre's son. I do think he's quite funny though. He has this little, uh, little, uh, little bit of a high-pitched voice and shakes his head a little bit as he talks, doesn't he? And it's very funny. Is that, is that kind of a Michael McIntyre thing? Xolost, thank you very much for the five bucks. I appreciate it. Very kind of you. Mikey, one, three, two, four. What question do you want to ask, ask me? Ask it away. Have I considered going on Forge and Fast? Somebody else can answer that question on YouTube. Come on now, guys. Of course, I've considered it. And I decided against it. And the reason I decided against it is I wanted to be able to spend as much time hanging out with you guys here on YouTube and on Twitch as possible. And it's a massive time commitment to go on the show. So I decided against it in favor of the interwebs. The interwebs. Great. I, in fact, got very close to doing the show, and I would likely have been filming right now had I agreed. So I would have been right now on the show, and I wouldn't be able to hang out with you guys and do these fun live shows and vlogs. And I mean, that would just be sad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to deprive you. <laughs> No, I just, I just want to make sure that I keep making YouTube videos. What are some cool places in England? I'm going there this summer. Mikey1324. Naturally, spend a little bit of time in London. 
it's an interesting beast. Um, it's not necessarily representative of the rest of England, though, on the whole. So, you know, spend a little time in London, see the sights, you know, two or three days there. You do a lot in London. You'll expect to spend a lot of money. That's, it's, it's, it's an interesting place. It's pretty expensive. Um, you know, go spend some time in London. That's definitely a thing you should do if you're visiting England. And then go into the countryside. Go to the coast somewhere. You know, try and find somewhere that's a little more uh, quaint in England. Get into the countryside and spend some time enjoying the uh, enjoying some of the beautiful landscape we have here. Why see him on Forge and Fire when you can see him literally every day here? Exactly. Why would you want to have to tune into a show where you got to watch bloody 15 hours of ads to watch three minutes of video, and you then don't see me for three weeks? Like, come on, guys. This is this is where it's at. That's funny, Marquis Z Dan 95. I think you're just too worried that you would do bad. That is absolutely a very true statement. It's not the driving force of why it is that I decided not to go on Forge and Fire, but a very, a very real part of the overall decision to not go on it is I am not a knife maker. Whenever anybody asks me about it, I say this time and time again, and I really hope that you are all aware of this. I'm not a knife maker, I'm a blacksmith, and I'm learning a blacksmithing, and I am just dipping my toes into the craft of blacksmithing, and all the knives I've ever made have been on YouTube. I've not made a lot of knives, right? Absolutely. Am I ready to go up and compete with master smiths and the incredible talent that goes on Forge and Fire? Absolutely not. When you see in my videos, you see me taking a lot of time to get things as close to right as possible. I simply don't have the muscle memory, the skill, the overall, the overall history and experience in the craft to at all be able to compete. It's a great part of it. You know, in terms of why it is I decided not to go on, because, you know, I'm still learning. Why would, I, why would I go on a show about knife making when I'm still at the very beginning learning stages? I'm from Norwich in the United Kingdom, Rob Swinbank. Do 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 da do ba do ba. Not selling any hammers currently. I am a first generation blacksmith. Well, I haven't skipped a couple of generations. Nightbot can work on YouTube as well. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to set it up. Fantastic. Do, you ever, do I ever go up to Hunt Stanton on the coast? I rarely go to Hunt Stanton. Um, hello from France. Snake Peel Skentisi. French accent of his said. Canadian YouTuber tried to join Fortune 5, but wasn't able to since he was an American citizen. Not sure if that applies to the UK as well. No, they sent me all, they were fine with having non-Americans on. So they, they, you know, they sent me all the paperwork. They didn't have a problem. They just had to modify some things. And obviously, you know, all sorts of fun things like that. Joey Vandersteeg, the, uh, the one, the only Joe Van, Joey Vandersteeg is in the chat. Everybody give him a round of applause. He's in the YouTube chat. How you doing, Joey? Great having you here. Great, should we do some more work? I think we need to do some more work. Now, where might I have left a tongue clip? Goodness gracious me. Go ahead and give it a grip. Get a grip, Alec. Uh oh. Tong is a, a little wide for this. Come on! There we go, tongue clip just about on after I give myself a hernia. So now take this. 
And we'll go ahead and start chiseling, eh? Give it the old Scottish chiseleroo. If you're not familiar, have you been under a brick all these years? Not familiar with a Scottish chiseleroo? It's a rare breed of Scottish kangaroo. It has chisel shaped feet. Scottish chiseleroo. It's a very interesting beast. I don't know what I'm saying. Hey, you gotta pass the time somehow, right? Am I right? Great, 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 great. Okie dokie. So my cut's all lined up. Next heat, I'm gonna be able to come in again and work it a little. Innuendos. Work a little more into the cut. What is going on? I'm from Scotland, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yes, you should have zero idea of what I'm talking about. Right, I need a drink of water here in a second. Oh, cancel. What's going on, what's going on? So many notifications. Goodness gracious. Woo! Have you all shared the stream, by the way, ladies and gentlemen? Have you all share the stream? Please go and share the stream. I'd really appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you very much for the art of craftsmanship. He says my channel is brilliant in inverted commas, presumably because, in quotation marks, pardon me, presumably because that's exactly how I speak, which is great because everything's awesome and fantastic and lovely and brilliant. Go share the stream right, right now. Share it with your friends on Facebook. We've got some more forging to do, it's gonna be fun. Let's see if we can up the viewers on YouTube a little bit. Come on, guys. Craig Sailor, what's your favorite beer? I actually don't drink. Sorry to be a little bit of a prude. I, I, one of my favorite beer, however, was Doom Bar. I really, I really, really liked Doom Bar. So that was, uh, that was always a good beer. And whenever anybody comes and visits from overseas, I always recommend they, uh, they get that. The whole point, yes, on the, on the Twitch stream, Casper 2018, with your Nightbot, when people ask if you're going to be on Fortune 5, at the end it says videos instead of video. That's a point. If you watch YouTube, um, AVE on YouTube, you'll know why it says videos instead of videos. It's a little tip of the hat to uh, AVE. Okay. Great. Power on through. Drive it in there. Lovely jubbly. Make sure I take it out of there every time. Keep it nice and cool. Blow it out. Goodness gracious. Make sure I can see what I'm doing. Let's see if it is. Uh oh. Drink. Bing, 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 bing. Hardly even hot. Barely melted it. Oh my goodness! So many tools around me. Let's take one more heat. Should be able to finish it here on the next one. Jolly good, everybody. Everything is always great. It is always great. Beauty bar. Have ever heard of Crowjack on YouTube? Never heard of him on YouTube. No, I don't know who that is. Pum, pum. What do I do with all the stuff I make? I keep it, sometimes I give it as gifts, sometimes I might sell it. Do you watch the YouTube show Man at Arms? I do. Thank you for the little donation, Dustin Ramey. I appreciate it. I do watch Man at Arms sometimes. Great, very talented people there. Thank you very much, Hexadog. I appreciate you stumbling across the channel. That's just bloody fantastic. Bloody brilliant. Been a blacksmith for eight years or so, full time for about three years. Thank you very much, and Josek. 
Now, don't let me make a guess at how old you are. Let me guess. You're 27 years old. I need another two. Okay. There is one down here. Jolly good. Brill. Did I go to college to study engineering or anything? Nope. High school dropout. I'm proud. I'm going to need this a little later for now. There we go. Keep opening it up. Jolly good. Starting to get close there, so before I start damaging my chisel, I'm going to now go over to the mild steel block. Woo! Opened so much of that up in just the one blow. Boom. Open it up again. Right into the crop. Goodness gracious, Alec. This is terrible. How am I going to keep this family friendly? Probably by not even bringing it up that it's an innuendo. Uh oh, now kids are asking their parents what that means. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Um, bunnies and fairies. There we go. So now that's going to go in the forge. Woo! Hello, everybody. How are you all? Somebody asked, what kind of music do I listen to? I'm uh, one of those people that's really quite uh, partial to some country music. Love me some country music. Just listen to how many people are leaving the stream. You hear doors slamming as you hear somebody listens to country music. It's bloody fantastic. I don't know why anybody would dislike it. Ready to go. Ready to go. I'm going to switch you guys around to here. Boom. Look at that. Oh, it's like it's a professional stream. So, now I'll come in here with the hammer and open it up. Ow, hit myself in the hand with the bloody hammer handle. Goodness gracious me. Okay. Now I'm opening her up. Move her across. Here we go. Here we go. Jolly good. Good. Oh, missed. That'll work. Open it up a little bit. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind open my vise. Fabulous. Ugh. Take the rasp and file off the sharp edges again. Standing. What fun this is. Sorry, camera three, you might get a little. Oh, that was right. There we go. Okay. Jolly good. Now, what we're going to do. This one right here. It's going to get the old Scottish taper on it. Yep. Jolly good. Bottom one. One to the right. This is going to get a little chamfer on it like we did on the last one. Okay, let me make sure I have a hammer handy. 
I don't have a hammer. Where is the hammer gone? Ah, it's here. Found the hammer. Oh, you're off screen. Uh-oh. Can't see anything. We'll fix it right now. You know what else I need to do? I need to move this around. It's hot in here. It is toasty. There we go. Almost got it. Mario Antencio, really appreciate the lovely little donation and the kind message. Thank you very much. J'ai 19 ans, leader Eagle, asked how old I was in French. Pam, pam, pam. That's great, Roy to Philip. Really pleased. Really, really pleased. How many gallons of propane do I go through in an eight-hour day? I don't know. About 50 pounds, though, in weight. In weight. Tiring stuff. Do you in Europe, if so, where? That is not English. Do you in Europe is not English. Ah, uh, so many comments. Difficult to read them all, guys. Come on now. Sam is on holiday. How do I feel about being mentioned by Wrangler Star? Life goals complete? Not quite. But I, I felt pretty giddy, pretty thrilled about that. A real honor. What was I planning on doing before I knew blacksmithing? Uh, well, before I knew blacksmithing, I was 11. I wasn't really thinking about what I was going to do. So, a little, little bit of a tough question there. What type of car do you drive? I drive a little Ford Ranger pickup. Can I make a pen on the lathe? That's a cool idea. James Hamrick asks, do I live in Europe? If so, where? Yes, I, I live in England. I assume that's relatively obvious. Ba, ba, bum. It would be a cool setup if I took calls for the live show. Um, I need to work out a, a, a smart way of doing this. I probably need somebody dedicated to doing that to make sure that when people called in, the sound was good, stuff like that. Really appreciate the live shows. Thank you very much. Gustav Forsberg, he asked for me to say something in Swedish. If you send another message in Swedish, I'll try and send it. I'll try and read it. I'm waiting for you to say something in Swedish for me to say. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. It is hard to tell with that deep southern drawl. I know that smilts. I know it's hard to tell where I'm from. Because I talk like this all the time. Pretty tough. Cha Gura. Apparently Gustav Furzberg. Yeah, let me know Roy to Philip. I'd really appreciate that. That'd be very kind. All right, we're going to do this. Come on now. Anybody knows that a regular feature of any of my live streams, anybody that watches the uh, Twitch feeds knows that a regular feature of my live, free, live streams is, uh, you know, a little bit of a southern accent here or there. I had a great respect for my friends in the South. And mainly because I'm just like a, a, a wannabe Texan, which I mean, I'd gladly admit to. But I sometimes, you know, throw on the action a little bit too much, probably. Let's take another heat. Doo -doo -doo -da -da -ba -ba -ba. Everybody on Twitch wants me to be Twitch partnered, which is great. Which is great. That's very kind of you. I wonder, I wonder if they do it faster if you'd spam them all. Spam Twitch Twitter or something. 
bum, bum. Try challenging yourself to doing some smithing with your off hand. That would be pretty funny. That would be terrible. It would be, be terrible. It would be terrible. So many comments. So many comments. When did I start learning from Brian? 13. I know my, my belt buckle needs to be at least two times bigger to qualify for Texan citizenship. When I made this belt buckle, I thought it was a pretty big belt buckle, but it's not big enough. I need a belt buckle like this to, to really be truly Texan. Simioto, that's absolutely correct. hammer next heat. We should get you a big cowboy hat. I already have several cowboy hats. <laughs> Speaking of organizational skills, did you ever find your missing drift? Never found it. Nope. Never found it. Have you ever thought about trying out for Forge and Fire on the History Channel, says Tier Monster. Clearly new, I really appreciate that. You're new to the stream. We've answered this like 20 times already on this stream though. Like, I appreciate you guys putting the command in for people to uh, get the automatic response. Woo! I did see Wrangler Star's video. Clearly also new to the stream, I've mentioned it three times now. I did see Wrangler Star's video and I was just thrilled um, for him to, to, to know that he's watching my videos. He's been commenting over the past week or so and uh, he replied to my comment on his video saying uh, that he and his son watches, uh, he and his son watch my videos, which is a real honor. It's really good, been watching him for a long time. Making a little bit of a mess of that one little short stubby taper there, aren't I? I'll fix it. Three more blows. Oh, I miss hit on the last one. Come on, Alex, stop miss hitting. You're bloody live. Jolly good. Okay. Chamfer, chamfer, chamfer. Check. Check it. Chamfer. There we go. Okay, back in the forge we go. Phew! Outstanding. Let's get some water. I haven't, I haven't drunk any water here. I'm gonna run and fill up my water. Ugh. Okie pokey. Yokely dokely. Smokely pokely, rokely pokely dokely boo. Yeah. We go, let's read some comments. There we go. Sit down. Hydrate. Um. I dribbled. I dribbled. I, well, it's not me, it's the bottle, really. That's why I don't advertise them. Uh. 
Okay. What's going on, guys? Water. Somebody asked me to say water like a Texan, and I'll oblige. Right, make sure that I've read all these super chats. Ba 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 ba. Doo 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 doo. Uh oh. I think I've broken it. Come on now, confuser. I done broke it. do some more work. Okey-dokey. Somebody just asked if I'm watching the derby today. I didn't know a derby was happening. Clearly not. Too busy being here. Just as it should be. Okey-dokey. What did this other one look like? I guess what I did is I came in like this on the other one, squared it off a little bit. Or a little bit like that too. A little bit like that too. And maybe a little bit like this. Then a little bit like that. And then a little bit like this. Ah, that looks, that reminds me a little bit of what I did on the other one. I don't know if I spoke quite so fast on the other one, though. Okay, let's hammer it away from myself, though. I don't want it as close. It's a really tough hammer blow to make. Great. Wunderbar. Wunderbar, wunderbar, wunderbar. Thrilling stuff. We're now going to put the little dog's leg in that thing right there. Flatten her off a little bit. Whew. Scale up the nose. Okay, boom. Kaboom. 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 Kaboom, boom, boom. There we go. Jolly good. Then he's a little refining in there. This steel likes to crack, doesn't it? Find cracks going on in there. This might not be mild steel. I don't know what I picked up. Okie dokie. What is going on, everybody? Alec, you're trying to get us drunk now. You pushed that hammer off. That's funny. Do the cracks occur due to poor steel? In this case, I see no reason for the cracks to have occurred from my work. So I think the steel is just bad. You know, it might be a piece of higher carbon steel, in which case it would be from my work. Um, I don't know, I don't know. What the Forge, you should send Wrangler Star's son a little one pound square circle hammer. I think he's a little, a little older than, than a young man that needs a one pound hammer. He could probably use a little heavier hammer than a one pound hammer. Do, do, do. Try the Dutch word, wunderbarig zirgig. Where would you recommend getting a metal lathe? I don't know, eBay? Do some more work. Go 
God, that is a nasty little crack there, isn't it? See if it opens up. If it does, then today will have been a fun exercise in uh, problems. It probably won't. It'll probably be just all right. Okie dokie. Jolly good. God, the different sizes. That's all right. I can cut that one down. <sighs> Okie doke. Let's cut it down. I have to go by eye. I don't have a good datum point. So. I can guess a date and point if I remember where I put my calipers. There they are. So that's not the right calipers. That's the expensive digital calipers. I don't know why I reach for those. And if you look closely, you did see they had duct tape on them. Ugh. Holding the battery in place. If you turn it upside down while you're measuring, you get a bad measurement. Everybody. Finn Shisha. Is that your name? He asked me to pronounce it. It's way too long. Far too much material. This is why you must prepare your work before you go straight for it. And I don't know why I'm speaking in a foreign accent. Look at those cracks occurring, that's no good. I weren't at all, I, I would be uh, completely amazed if it at all deteriorated from the functionality of the tool, for goodness sake, it's a bloody coat rack. Um, it is a shame that those cracks are appearing. That shouldn't happen with mild steel. That is a bummer. I wonder what material this is. I wonder where I got it. Just dug it out of the scrap pile. Oh well. We shall continue on regardless. Now, this step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting on the Hockett Hardy. Let me move a camera. And uh, what you're going to see is absolute carnage, ladies and gents. Oh no, because I can just about crop it out of frame. There we go. But what there is, is there are a load of tools on the ground there. <sighs> Fantastic. What is up, everybody? So many comments. As soon as I sit down, I just get crazy amounts of comments and I can't read them. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys. I want there's a crack at staying there, Terrectic Tor. I am bloody naked, goodness. But thank you very much for <laughs> for 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 that is it. What is going on? So many comments, I can hardly read anything. Have I ever smashed my finger with a hammer before? Probably. Mm -hmm. Great, let's do some forging. Oh! So, what I'm going to do... Check the time first of all. It's really good.
fabulous. Ah. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, ow, toes. That wasn't my toes, metatarsals. Come on, this is a difficult thing to line up. Come on, come on, let's stay. Stay. I'm standing on about 15 pieces of hand tools on the ground. Always make sure you're forging on secure footing. Okay, now that that gets pretty thin, I can then probably just break it off in a safe manner. And then I'm gonna rasp it. And then, ow, hit myself in the chest with the vise. Now I'll rasp it. Get rid of my expensive calipers. I don't know why they're out here. Well, I guess I put them there. That's usually how my tools end up going wandering as I walk with them somewhere stupid and then put them down and then wonder where they ended up. Okay. Ah, and now we go back in and we repeat the last couple of processes again, which will be fine. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Fabulous. Wonderful. Outstanding. What is going on, everybody? How often do I clean my glasses during work? Uh, not, not very, and then I get home and then I wonder why all of a sudden my vision's poor, and then the glasses are like... Okay, you can't see. But they're dusty and dirty. Oh yeah, eh? we got Alex Ursu from Saskatchewan, Canada. Eh? He's been practicing the art of blacksmithing for a while now. Eh? And I'm gonna end my Canadian accent for the day. Ah, <sighs> oh, so many comments, just what fun. That was a bad accent, I know. Oh, everybody's cringing over that. I oh, should rightly so. Do do da ba 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 ba. Worst burn I've ever had. Go look at the Jelly Roll Damascus video. That was the worst burn I ever had. It wasn't that bad. But it was the worst I've had. It's not necessarily like a high stand because I've not had many bad, bad burns. But it was, it was deep. It was a deep burn. If you could make anything out of Damascus that was beyond your skill set, what would it be and why? I would love to make a Damascus pistol one day. That would be so cool, but it's illegal. Um, and then obviously beyond my skill set. That would be cool. I might have to see if I can collaborate with Jesse James one day. Maybe one day he'll start watching the videos. Maybe he's in the stream now. It would be pretty sick. It would be pretty awesome. But he makes Damascus firearms. Oh, I miss hit. Okie dokie.
Where is my workshop located? I'm on an industrial estate in the city. If I stand on my roof, I can see the cathedral here, which is lovely. And I can get many supplies very close by. And that's about all I really like about being in the city. There are the few benefits, admittedly good benefits, but I would indeed prefer being in the countryside. One day, I shall make said move. Great. Ugly dogly. There we go. Outstanding. We finally got back to where we were about 25 minutes ago. How are we doing on the stream? Fantastic. What's going on? What's going on? So. No, plot out the holes now. I'll bloody well plot out the holes now. Enough of this dilly-dallying. Get the bloody holes plotted out. Okay, so. Scribe it up. Find the middle. Take a center punch. And center punch it. Okie dokie, there we go with the center punch. Pop, up. Oh. Problem. Stand on a piece of wood. Oh, I'll just go down to the striking animal. Okay, I'm just set up punching something. Imagine somebody holding a piece of steel between his legs and then set up punching something. That's what I'm doing. Not necessarily the most thrilling thing in the world. I mean, maybe for some, but I'm just set up punching a piece of steel. Now, that's been set up punched. Next heat, we're gonna pop two holes in her. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello, 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 hello. having you all here. Okie dokie. I'm amazed at how many people ask how old I am. It's on Google. It's on my website. Goodness gracious. Right. Do some more blacksmithing, folks. Where did I put my punch? I have lost the punch. Ah, I found it. There we go. I need a tong clip, which I've also lost. Mmm, kidogi. And we're gonna get going again. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Let's try and punch these two holes in the same hit. Ah, there we go. 
Outstanding. My glove is so hot. Ooh. All right, let's give that a cool. Ow, 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 ow. Check it, check it. And back we go. Gonna punch down a little further. Boom! Two hits, two plugs. That's how I like to do it. Two plugs have fallen out. Beautiful, nice clean holes. I like it, I like it, I like it. Put them on the ground and start doing a little more forging, I guess. Okay, let me check the time. 9.30. I'll do a little more forging, then I'm gonna call it a night, and then we'll do part two of this on the next stream. Which is good, and it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be our first two-part live stream. So I'm gonna be excited to see you all next week when we complete this. Woo! Have you heard of the Discord? I... Somebody send me a link. Send me a link. Doo -doo -doo -da. It does currently look like some weird lawnmower blade indeed. Ba, 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 ba. Party pooper. Oh, I'm sorry guys. Poor little poor little buttercups. I'm sure you'll be okay. We'll see you next week. I mean, I'll see you, see you on bloody Monday on another episode. Something for you to say in Swedish. Zex laxar en laxax. Six salmons in a salmon box. Let me find this link. Let me find this link. Ta da! Great! Huh. Hello, everybody. Is it expensive to rent a shop in such an industrial park? I have a very cheap workshop here, thankfully. So my rent is very inexpensive. Now, oh, what else is going on? What well, fun, it's great hanging out with you all. Now remember everybody, be sure to go to twitch.tv forward slash Alex Steele if you're on YouTube. Go hit follow for any behind the scenes live streams which I plan to be doing. Yeah, most days next week, same things will be happening. <laughs> Great having you all here. My workshop's about 700 square feet. 700, 800 square feet. Very small. Right, this is gonna be the penultimate heat for today. And then I'm gonna go get some rest. Because I need to wake up super early. But I'm going to kill it in this heat. Friggin' attack the metal. You know, it's so much fun when you actually do attack the metal a little bit more than you might usually. Boom. There we go. Now onto the diagonals. Boom, boom, boom. Sound effects and all, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you end a live stream in style by hammering the crap out of a hot, hot, hot. Uh-oh, cold shut, gotta file it out. That's not how you end a live stream in style. I need to file that out. Okay, 
So the live stream isn't ended. I'm just filing out a culture. I made a miss hit, and it was a real bad miss hit. And the way it reacted wasn't good. So I'm going to rasp out my cold shut. Now a cold shut is where you accidentally drag down some material and it folds over onto itself without welding. That's a cold shut and that's what I just did. Ugly duckly. Ugly duckly pokly pokly. Let's give it one more heat. I can't let that be the last heat for goodness sake. We'll give it one more heat. Make sure you don't. Ooh, ow. Make sure that we really end on a cracking heat. It's been great having everybody here. Woo! Outstanding. Oh, I have something else to check. Somebody else to thank. Let me make sure. Oh, 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 oh! I don't know if he's watching. In case anybody knows him, let me know. I, I am sincerely grateful. Somebody, here we go. I got an Amazon parcel the other day. I order a lot of stuff from Amazon. Um, so I'm always getting deliveries and I thought, well, goodness, I haven't ordered anything from Amazon, at least in the past two days. I get a delivery from an Amazon driver. He comes in with a box and then inside said box is this. And I'm thinking to myself, I did not order this. And I thought to myself, Goodness gracious, one of you kind viewers bought me a box of bits. So, I bought a box of bits so that I never had troubles unboxing any weird Canadian crazy, crazy boxes. And I'd like to extend a great thanks to Nikki Woodhead for that. Nice little surprise. As well, a great thanks to all the other really kind folks who will occasionally drop things off here. But, uh, but no, that was, a, that was pretty cool. That was a great surprise. Ba, ba, ba. Great, okay, almost ready for the last heat. Almost ready for the last heat. Almost ready. What fun. Okie dokie. Ready? You ready? Last heat. It's gonna be epic. This is where it all happens. This is where it all happens. Hey, Roy to Philip. Wait a second. Comment that again once we finish the stream. I'll have to comment that I need to uh, make sure to remember. Okay, final heat and we're going at it like never ever seen. Not quite, but at least we're going at it. Ah, lovely. And I'll switch that on over. Boom, boom, boom. And now the reason that you need to make sure that you're here next week, next Saturday, but around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is you want to see me make a calla lily out of this, make them nicely arranged, and make two beautiful hooks. Make rivets, and put it all together. Guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this stream. It's been an absolute blast. Please be sure to go to twitch.tv forward slash Alex if you want to see more streams. Go to Instagram, follow me on Instagram, at Alex Steele Blacksmith. And look, like if you want a cool t-shirt, you know, like go get some, go get some merch. There's a link in the description. It's pretty, uh, like it's great quality, and I think they're cool designs, and it's a great way. If you like the videos, and you want to help out, that's a great way to do it. I'd sincerely appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a blast. I'll see you next week on the next stream. I'll also see you on Monday on the next episode, which is going to be awesome. So I look forward to seeing you on Monday. I'm going to be working on more hammers, trying to uh, film it in new ways that makes it interesting. And I'm so pleased to have you wonderful people here watching. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.